Hi everybody, this is Katie Vandermeer, and I just wanted to welcome you to CAS 233 for the fall semester. I wanted to make this video for my online class of 233 and also my face-to-face -face class of 233. So I have two sections. The face-to-face uh, -face course is on Wednesdays, and that's section 3010. And the online class is online, and that's 3011. But we do everything the same, face-to-face -face or online. Face-to-face, -face, we have more opportunities, obviously, where we can do some hands-on work with software and hardware products, and we do that. Um, I'll always post an announcement for my online students so that you can come to our class if you want to have an opportunity to do those. Um, types of things, but uh, I like to look at these classes as the same, even though some of them we meet and some of them I'll never see your face. So I'll, I'm happy to, um, when I do projects like that in my face-to-face -face class, I'll post announcements in the online class and let you know. <clears throat> so what I want to do in this video is to go through how our class is laid out and what your expectations are, uh, what you can expect to learn, and what I expect from you as a student. Also, for my face-to-face -face class students, I won't be there the first day, as you found out. There's somebody else there that's not me. I and my online students, I'll be out of email a little bit the first week. I have a surgery on August 30th, and that's one week away, less, less than a week away from where I'm recording this video. Uh, but right in the in the inopportune time for uh, a professor, it's the start of the semester. But um, I've had some problems all summer, and I'm looking forward to the surgery so that I can fix things, or the doctors can fix things. And then I'll be back the second class meeting and the second week of school back online. Uh, but that shouldn't prevent you from not learning anything the first week because we have a lot of things to do over this fall semester. So that's why I'm making this ahead of time so you can get started on things. You can also, um, if you're in my online class, you can send me an email and I'll get to it when I'm feeling better the first week. Uh, if you have any questions that aren't answered in Blackboard. And with my face-to-face -face class, uh, there will be a substitute there the first day, so you can learn how to log in and ask any questions you might have for that person who's there. So thank you, and thank you for understanding that. So I'm going to go through the both of the classes I have I have open here. They're both set up exactly the same. So everything that you see in one, you'll see in, see in the other. Um, first of all, I use announcements in Blackboard quite a bit. I have a few already. Um, our class, both face-to-face -face and the online classes, are going to start August 31st. So our class will run from Wednesday to Wednesday, and due dates will be Wednesday night at 11.59. So even for my face-to-face -face class, for online classes, that's when things are, are due and when we'll run our class. So online students, you don't have to show up at all or be online at any particular time. And for face-to-face -face students, our class period is from 9.30 till 12.30 and 2.13 of the ATC. Online students, if you ever want to come to class to hear a lecture or just to get help with something, you can... Uh, show up then to any time. We have room in our face-to-face -face class. I don't mind that if that's what you prefer to do. Um, with announcements, when I send an announcement, it goes to your email. The first probably didn't because they were set up before uh, you have maybe enrolled or before the class was active. But make sure you check your student email and you check um, Blackboard throughout the week, especially if you're in our online class, because then that's how you know what's coming up, what you need to do, any important announcements, things like that. 
So I post several announcements, like when grades are done, lots of things throughout the week. And they get sent right to your email as well. One of the things I posted about was meeting the author of our textbook. Oh, I'm in my home office because our cubicles, if you've gone to our office in the ATC, they're very small, like really small. So there's no privacy and also there's no really room to do anything. So I do a lot of things at home. Here's the textbook. Uh, we do need the textbook, and the one that we're using is the 7th edition. It's very different than the 6th, so unfortunately you do need the 7th edition. But uh, it was released last year, and last year I met Jill West. She's this blonde, little blonde lady right here. I met her last year, and then again this year at the CompTIA Educator Conference, and had a really good talk with her about um, how she writes the book and how we can best utilize the book to learn uh, computer network and also study for the net plus exam. So I look forward to sharing that information with you guys this semester and helping it helping use this book to our to our benefit as much as possible. So you you'll do you do need to buy a textbook. Um, and then I just post, you know, like I posted how many points are in the class. I'll use the announcements for reminders and, and just a ton of stuff. And they get sent to your email, so check your student email. Uh, here is a professor link. This is information about me. Um, in here you'll find my cell phone, my office phone, my email address, a website that you might want to follow. Um, Facebook, if you're on Facebook, I do have a Facebook page that um, I do hope that you follow. I post a lot of department information out there. I post internships that come up, things that we're doing at the, at the community college, um, when there are new courses, like CCNA courses are now open. Uh, I post jokes, things, things that I think are funny. Um, local things that are going on in the IT world that uh, people like you should be interested in. Uh, so go on the Facebook and find my page. It's Katie GRCC. Like that. Like. And then you can join. Oh, I have a couple hundred people that like my page now. I've had out for a couple years or so. Maybe a year or two years. So check it out. Hmm. Here's my cell phone number. You can text me anytime. If you want to call me, you can call my cell number or you can call my office phone. I'm not usually at my office, but it does forward calls to my cell phone. So feel free to do that. Uh, the best way, though, if you want a quick response, I don't always answer my phone if I don't know who it is. You know. But the best way is just to send me an email. I get my, I always have my phone nearby, right here. I always check my email, and if it's important, I'll respond right away. If it's a question on your assignments and I need my computer, I might take a, um, you know, a day or so for me to get back to the computer to respond to you. But I'll get your email right away as well. So uh, please send me an email if you have any questions throughout the semester. I have a YouTube page as well, um, in addition to Facebook, and uh, I use that for all of our videos like this one that we're making. So you might, if you're a YouTube user, you could follow my page too. Maybe it'll be useful when you're no longer a student and you want to see what's going on and what we're talking about um, in the future. I have them all open to the public, so I'm certainly not a famous YouTuber. YouTuber. But I have a couple followers, and maybe you can be one of them as well. Um, office hours are on my uh, website, katievandermeer.com. Uh, basically, I'm on campus on Wednesdays and Fridays. And then I'm off campus, uh, available to work during your normal work hours, Monday through Friday, typically. 
Um, but I will have set office hours because I do have meetings and I have class time that I'm in, in um, that I'm responsible for. Um, I'll let you know, or you can follow this link for them. Uh, if you need, if you um, need to set up an appointment, or if you need to, um, if you want to set up an appointment, then please send me an email first so we can schedule it. It's a little bit easier that way than just dropping office hours so we know when we're going to meet. I do have an office. It's in 212 the ATC. And then a little bit more about my teaching style and about my, uh, me personally. I'm starting my 18th year here at the college and I've taught networking and programming for quite a long time. It's fun, I enjoy it, and I enjoy teaching online and face-to-face, -face. so um, I think you'll learn a lot in this class and I think you'll enjoy it. Here's my weekly schedule. I want to follow that. Okay, here, there's another link. Here's the link to our calendar of due dates. Again, when you look at either the online or the face-to-face -face course, it, it is, it's exactly the same. Um, we're running from Wednesday to Wednesday. Uh, we have in here, it'll tell you what we're doing that day or that week. So beginning August 31st, you need to do Unit 0, and that's due September 7th at 11.59 p.m. Week two, which is September 7th, that's when it begins. You need to do unit one, and that's due September 14th. So it's very clearly laid out, and plus I'll post announcements of what, when things are. But it's very, very clear, clearly laid out of what you're doing that week and when it's due. So if you have any questions, just check that calendar due dates, and you'll find it there. Um, also at the bottom, we have... Oh, I should make a note on this. I want to make a note on this. At 11.59 on that Wednesday, when something's due, um, most assignments, the extra credit is an exception, but every, all of the quiz and the labs and the assignments that are due at 11.59, they don't shut off or go away or disappear after that time. So if you're getting ready to submit it, but you need 10 more minutes or something, don't sweat it, don't freak out. It'll still be active and you can still submit it past that due date. Even if it's two days late, you can still submit it. I'll just take off late points. Um, if it's only a few minutes or, or what have you, I'm very flexible. I don't take off late points, but I want you to know that the assignments don't disappear. I know some people do that. I don't. So they don't disappear once that stroke of midnight hits. They're still there. It's just that they'll be marked late, and then I'll personally, depending on your circumstances, decide uh, if late points will be deducted or not. It depends on a lot of different variables. Um, also on here is a breakdown of our grades. In this class, we have almost 2,000 points. We have 1,900 uh, and six points possible in this class, but this is a cool way to see how many points come from the, the five categories of work. Really, there's four, because discussion boards, there's just one we do at the beginning, and that's an easy 20, you'll get 1%, 20 points for free, basically. Uh, we have labs and quizzes, transcender, and um, midterm exams, uh, and final exams. So you can see most of your points, 38% come from the lab work that we do. 11% comes from Transcender, which is test prep software for Net Plus. Uh, a lot of things come from your quizzes. A lot of points come from your quizzes, 32% of your full grade. Now, the good thing is these quizzes, you can use your book. You can take as long as you want. You can only submit it once, but you can double check all of your answers by finding them in the book or reading them twice. Um, so you, those are really easy points. And your lab work are just assignments that you do as well. If you get stuck on something like a, um, a lab or a homework assignment, you can help um, ask me for help and get your points from there as well. So 
Um, Transcender also is credit, no credit. So those are, you do them and get your points as well. So is this class an easy A? I say it is if you do every single thing. But if you miss one lab or you definitely miss two labs, your grade will go down quite a bit. So you don't want to do that at all. Make sure you do all of the things that are assigned. Speaking of that, looking at assignments, this is where you'll see all of the assignments. They're broken down by unit. And then what you'll want to do is say, okay, let's look over here. And um, maybe you say, okay, it's September 21st. I need to be working on unit three. It's due on the 28th of September. So I'm going to go into unit three in here. And I will do everything that's in Unit 3. Okay. Just an example. I have all of the unit folders out there and available for you to, to work ahead early. I'm going to leave them open for, for you to do that. Some of you have things coming up at the end of the semester or like to work ahead. I'm not going to guarantee that what I have is all that you're going to have, but it's probably pretty close. Uh, we might have something that comes up mid-semester that I want to fit into a unit or something that, that we have an opportunity to do that I think is a good project that will will add to it. But the majority of our points and our assignments are out there for you. Let me go back here. So you'll see, and actually this, the, these units, let's take a look here in, I have to remove this video and replace it with the one that I'm making right now so it'll look a little different. But in each of the units, there's different things to do. So if we look at unit four, for example, it, there'll be an introduction of the chapter, there'll be the slide deck, which is the PowerPoint presentation, um, there'll be a quiz. Sometimes there's a homework project or hands-on project or lab assignment. And then sometimes there's a transcender assignment. Sometimes there's both. So in this particular unit four, there's all three of the types of assignments you'll have. So remember, here we have a midterm and a final that's separate. Then we have quizzes, labs, and transcender. The session board is, not, is only one. So we have these three types of things that you'll see at each of the units. Some units only have two of those things. Some of them only have one. Not very many. But most of them have three of them. Not most of them. Probably about 50-50 or 40-50 have, um, have a that makes sense. But it, some of them have three, some of them have two, most of them have two. Um, so we have taken a look at how, in, and in unit four, again, it has all three. So this is a good unit for us to look at as an example. Um, let's talk for a minute about the quizzes. When you go in to take a quiz, you can um, use your textbook, use your notes, uh, there's a quiz link. They're all active. It'll have the deadline set up. Go in there and you can start it. And you can go into a quiz multiple times, but you can only save and submit it once. So say you have time to answer, let's see, most quizzes are 25 questions, two points a piece. And every chapter has a quiz. So let's say you only have time to answer five questions. So I'm going through I'm not reading these, I'm just picking real quick. Um, let's say we're answering our five questions, that's all I have time for. Notice over here it changed from unsaved or from not saved to saved. So it saves my answers as I pick one, it's being saved. Fiber, I can't. I know that one's fiber. So it as I pick one, it saves my answer, or if it doesn't, see, it's 
oops, it took a second, but then it did it. You can always hit save answer. Now when you want to, maybe you have to go, you don't have time to finish it, just close out of the quiz. That's okay. When you want to go back and finish it up, go back there and then hit continue. And it will pull up the ones that you've already answered and the ones that you don't, you haven't. So finish answering all of them. Use your textbook, like I said. And then at the end, you would do save and submit and that submits it for grading. Now here it says it's incomplete because I didn't finish all of them so I want to cancel out of that but when you're ready to turn it in save and submit and you'll get your grade right away. If you have um, something that a, a question that you dispute that got marked wrong send me an email and I'll take a look at it. This is the second year we've used this textbook I don't know when the, the Netflix was updated last year in 2015. I don't have a, they don't have a release time for when the newer one is coming out or a newer one is coming out. Um, but at this point, everything is pretty um, updated. Like last year, there were some questions with the test bank in, in the quizzes and then some errors and we fixed them. So this year should be pretty, everything should be in there pretty good. Um, here we have uh, an example of a homework assignment. So chapter four project, when you have a, um, an assignment, you need to click on here, open up the Word doc, do what's in there. Hold on one second. So with the uh, assignment, you'll download an assignment. It'll tell you how to do something or what they want you to do or what I want you to do. You'll answer your your things onto this document after you enable editing. Save it. I just closed it, but save it. And then you'll click here to upload that file. You could attach a file and then submit it. And I download them all and then grade them. So that's how the assignments are. Let me check if I lost my video. I'm going to pause for a minute. So if I lost my video and you can't see me anymore, sorry, but um, if you can, I'm still here. Hopefully you're still seeing the screen okay and hearing me okay so I don't have to make it again. All right. My light is still on on my on my webcam, so that's good. Okay, so there's assignments, quizzes, and then there's Transcender assignments. Um, I have some videos on how to use Transcender that you will watch with your first Transcender assignment. Transcender is a test prep software. It's also called X Voucher. Now, I want to give you a quick look at how this looks, and I'm going fast. But that's okay. There are instructions later on when you have your first assignment on how to use that. So you don't have to follow my me logging into it because mine is a little different than yours anyway. Um, but once you get into X Voucher, once you buy Transcender, and we'll talk about requirements in a minute for that, um, you have different things you can do, preset exams, which we'll do, and then we have optimized exam experiences. And this option we do for most of the assignments and the topics. Uh, and as we go on with the course and talk about what the Net Plus exam is and what the ob exam objectives are, you'll see that the objectives from the, the Net Plus, the the objectives that are listed on CompTIA's website. You can download it for free and I have one inside of um, Blackboard. But you'll see that that matches exactly with these six categories that are in, whoops, I think I'm in the wrong one. It looks like, yeah, it looks like I'm in Windows Server. I know my certification. This is See, I have several different 
ones that I um, teach. So I, I want to go to Net Plus access product. For some reason, it launched my um, Windows Server course. So here, make sure I'm in the right one, N10006, that says Net Plus exam, uh, exam experience. Okay, so you'll notice when you look at the objective list for, for CompTIA and what they expect, it'll match up with exactly what transgender test questions are. So when you do an assignment for Transcender, it will tell you, I tell you in Blackboard something like, go to this area, um, you want to look for all questions that have the keyword table in, tables in the first box. So we go down here, type in tables, hit start, and 10 questions come up. Um, and there will be another video sh that will tell you how to do this again. But this um, piece of software is so useful in helping prepare us for the certification and also um, prepares us to um, know all of the objectives and the concepts for network administration, which is what you're doing in this course. So you would read a question, you would select, you know, you'd pick your answer, um, you could grade the item right away. And that's really useful because it tells you um, an explanation of what, what it is. So reading is the most important part when you're using Transcender, not necessarily if you get the question right or wrong. I mean, at the end of the class, you want to make sure that you have things right. Because you want to do well on your certification if you go and take that. But when we're using Transcender in our class, um, throughout the semester, it's for us to um, really understand the objectives and how to take certification tests and how they write certain questions. So that's why we do it this way. Um, at the end of your exam in Transcender, so once you go through whatever it is, it'll give you this screen. You need to do a screenshot of this and tell me what your score is. So in Blackboard, here's our Transcender assignment. Uh, you can click on here, and it says begin. There's three questions I ask in every Transcender. What percentage did I earn? I earned a zero percent. So a zero, not good. Um, summarize the questions that you missed. Now this is so that you can kind of uh, write down the things that you missed. Now in my case, I missed everything. So I missed three questions in network architecture, four in troubleshooting, and three in practice of standards and network theory. But you don't want to just report that. You want to look at your history or look at each of the questions that you got wrong. You can go to the exam history or you can review your answers and then you know report which ones you got wrong you don't I don't want you to copy and paste I want you just to quickly explain to me what what you got wrong so um, answer wrong and perhaps why and and then um, And then the final question that I always ask you is to attach a screenshot. So in Transcender, right here where you have your test, oh, I need to go back to where it showed me here. You can just do something like a, a, like a snippet using the snipping tool if you're on Windows or something similar. You just grab a quick screenshot save that, and then upload that into Blackboard. So when you're inside the test, I have this third question, which is um, attach a screenshot. So just browse to where that file is, select it, and it'll attach it right to your question. Um, now Blackboard questions, notice that I got a zero, but it's worth 20 points. There each question is worth, or each transcender is worth 30 points 
plus extra credit. These 30 points here, if you do the transcender assignment, no matter what this score is, you'll get your 100%. So you'll get 20 out of 20 if you answer this, even if you scored 0% or, you know, 50% or whatever. Um, and here, so put in what your answers, you know, summarize your what you missed, and you'll get your 10 points. And then if you s provide a screenshot, you'll get your extra credit. Um, and then you save and submit that. But the point for Transcender is to help you prepare for the certification. And I expect for you to go through this test the first time and do very poorly because they're not written the same way they are in the book. You have to learn the questions. You have to learn how certification, how certification questions are asked. So Transcender is a tool that's used in industry all the time for people to go and get tests um, and get certified. It's a, a great tool um, that we've used for the past year. We've had many students over the past year. You'll see their names um, on the on our website and on our. Um, TV screen in the in the ATC um, who have passed their certification and more so last year than any year in the past and it's because we're using Transcender. So if you want to get certified, you you want to use this product, you know, while you own it. And there's assignments that you have to do out of there. So that's how um, Transcender works. And the first assignment I think with Transcender is with Unit Three. Well, we can talk about that more when we get um, to that unit. Um, so, again, in the assignments folder, you'll see all of the assignments for our course broken down by units. Um, one thing I want to mention, I have some, in some units, I have lecture videos that I've made. Um, and then as we've got, as I go on a little bit in the semester, uh, we're using a lot of Professor Messer videos. And he is just an industry leader in making YouTube videos on the Network Plus certification. And I found that, and I'll add them in the earlier folders for you too. You can watch mine, which is really a long drawn out video that goes through the PowerPoint and what's in the book. But what Professor Messer does is he takes the objective, I explain it to you here, he takes the objective um, and, and makes a short video on each of the exam objectives for that chapter. So for chapter five, which is network cabling, I went through his video library and he has hundreds of videos. You can grab them all right here. Here's a link to them. Uh, and you should add this to your, your videos that you want to watch because he really is amazing. But um, I added, I went through his video library and grabbed the videos that match up with the objectives that are in the textbook. And you'll see in our textbook there's a little, like, a, a little box at the beginning of each section that like this one right here and it says okay this um, what we're talking about here meets these network plus objectives that's what these numbers are on professor Messer's videos so his videos are short three seven three nine eight seven they're short snippets of explanations and he's got a lot of a lot of um, imaging, just super helpful in understanding um, the topic that, that you're trying to learn. And we found with students, they're a lot better to watch those short videos than these really long videos like I'm making right now. So um, those are the lecture videos that are included for you in the unit folder. And sometimes I have welcome videos or videos as well that you would watch. Um, each class, you know, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work, think about a three credit class as spending three credits or three hours in class. 
hours out. So you should expect to be somewhere around the six hour a week time that you're going to spend on this class. If you're studying for the certification at the same time, you'll probably want to spend a little bit more than six hours. Um, okay, we are down through assignments. If you have any questions on that in my face-to-face -face course or online, send me an email and I'll be happy to explain them. Um, feel free to work ahead. I'm, like I said, I might add things later, but I'll make sure you know about it. Um, it depends on what type of things come up. And also, I probably won't grade things ahead of time. So I, I will grade every week. Um, you'll get noted every week, every 10 days, 7 to 10 days or, or so. Um, between grading, I try to do it two times a week, but I don't always get all of my classes and things like that. Um, but I, I typically don't go way ahead. So if you're on, if we're on unit two as a class and you're on unit eight, I'm not going to go and jump ahead and grade all of that stuff because it's easier to grade things together for, for me. Um, here's a link to our discussion board. I have an open forum you can use, and then we have one graded discussion in this class. Grades, this is where you can find your grade. In unit zero, you'll see a, um, which is, let me go back over here. Unit zero is an introduction um, to this course, and one of the things that it um, shows you is a list of what these grading icons mean. These grading icons, when you go to my grades or go to grades, those will be those are these icons here. So if you look, I in in progress for chapter four quiz, meaning I opened it but I didn't submit it. So I can't grade it. The teacher can't grade it. So make sure um, the same with the assignment. Um, make sure that you check your grade sheet. If it's an exclamation point, it means that you turned it in, but I didn't, I didn't grade it yet. Make sure you check your grade sheet very often. You know, at least when I post an announcement that says grades are updated, go in and check and make sure what you think you turned in was turned in. And also that's where you can get feedback if I leave feedback for you. I think you just click on the, maybe on the grade and it will tell you um, the feedback. You can't see obviously, they don't have anything there. Um, all, of the, uh, um, all of the assignments are there so far. This will add up to 1,906 points. And so far I have an E, because I've done nothing. So I have an E. As I start to turn things in, or you start to turn things in, that grade will go up to an A, hopefully. And when it's an A, you can stop turning things in. It won't be an A until December, though. All right. There's your grades. Um, syllabus, syllabus and grading rubric. Here's a list of the things that we, um, uh, we have in our syllabus. To begin with, the Network Plus certification um, or the Network Plus class is to, to prepare you for the certification itself. Um, all of the outcomes are listed here and they match up with the outcomes of the textbook as well. Uh, and the certification was done, it's what is done in all of your um, intro to networking, computer courses, in all of colleges across the country it, and, and Europe. I mean, it's where, and other places as well, it's where we start um, learning about networking is with the NetPlus certification. Um, it's industry-wide cert that's offered by CompTIA. Um, and we'll talk about that in Unit 1 a little bit more, about what the certification means. You don't have to get that um, for the course, but we'll talk about what it means if you do get that, how that will benefit you in your future. Uh, the other policies in here are standard syllabus policies, attendance. Um, if you're in my face-to-face -face course, it doesn't matter if you're there or not. It's 
in same same with my um online, but I grade ba I grade based on your grade. So if you're enrolled in my face to face course and you don't come to class, that's okay as long as you still do your things on time and turn them in. I it doesn't matter to me if you're there or not. Um, if you're in the online class, I um, judge your attendance based on you turning things in. And that's how the college recognizes it as well. So in order for you to be verified as a student attending the class, you have to submit your work um, during key weeks and key periods. Um, we do have a late attendance policy. Uh, I'm sorry, a late submission policy for assignments. I'm pretty flexible, but um, constant abuse of that and several um, late assignments points will be deducted. College email and course communications. Make sure you're using your student email account to contact me. So you can access that right through Blackboard. It's the same username and password as it is um, to, to log into Blackboard. But we have a new policy at the school where we need to communicate through our GRTC email account. It just makes it easier to identify you as a student. Disability Support Services. Make sure that you register with Disability Support Services if you have a disability that needs to be accommodated in some way. So you have to um, contact them. They have to, or you actually, you have to let me know, I believe, what accommodation must be met so that we can help you. Make sure you do that. They're located in the Student Center, three, room 368. So whatever it is, if you need accommodations, I need to know what they are. Otherwise, I won't be able to help you. So make sure you contact Disability Support Services. Title IX reporting. We follow this strictly at the college. So if there's any violation, anything that would fall under this um, category, it's not just related to sports people, um, we do report that to the authorities. So uh, keep that in mind if you need a safe place to go. We are a Title IX reporting community college. Campus police. Um, other, other things there. Grading rubric. This um, just explains to you where your grade comes from, and then the same with the grading breakdown that we already looked at. Required materials. I know this video is getting long, and you're either sitting in class listening to it or listening to it at home. Um, I am almost done. There's a couple other things. We don't need to go through all of our links, but let's take a look at what's required for this course. Um, we need the textbook. I already mentioned you have to have the seventh edition. Um, it's a good book. It's very. It'll help you pass the cert and it'll help you pass this class. $148 is a brand new book. You can find them used all over the place. You can rent it. You can. I use. Um, I have a printed copy and then I use an online reading copy. Um, you can rent it online, like an ebook, um, or rent it even through the bookstore. So it's $148, it's probably a lot, it's a lot cheaper um, unless you have to buy it new, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, it's only a year old, so you should be able to sell it back after you're finished with it if you don't want to keep it, but um, make sure you get it for this course and get it for the first or second week because we'll be going into chapter one um, next week. It's already posted out there for you. Transcender, uh, you have to buy Transcender. We already looked at what it is. Um, how you purchase this is you have to go to the GRCC bookstore. Don't go to Transcender.com because they give us a 70% discount on their software prices. So for $50, you get the Network Plus test bank for six months. After six months, it expires, so you don't want to activate it until you're ready to start using it. You can buy an extension, but make sure that you go to the bookstore. They will ask for your email address. Once you pay for the pay for the transcender code for, for 233, which is the NetPlus transcender, um, they will email you 
uh, at your access code. And it comes from XVoucher. So XVoucher and Transcender, they're the same, not the same company, but they're the same, one in the same. XVoucher is the tool that manages the Transcender product. So we use those terms interchangeably, interchangeably. But um, you'll, you will get uh, an email or two emails on how to access that. The first in this course, let me take a quick look at our assignment. But I believe in this course, the first transcender assignment is in unit three. I think I put one in unit two. No. I have a lecture video. My lecture video. Um, unit three. Yeah, the first one is in unit three, and unit three is due on September twenty eighth. So you want to get transcender pretty quickly. If um, every we use transcender for a lot of courses. Um, in our department, every transcender you buy, you have to buy one for that particular class. Uh, each one is fifty dollars, but it's a product that you'll you won't regret having if you go get certified. Everybody who used it last year passed their certification test that they sat for on the first time, and also in industry it's used all the time, but it costs seventy percent more. So it's a good deal that they're giving us the students. Um, we may use a VM player or other additional software, but that will all be free. So textbook and Transcender, those are the two things you have to purchase. If you do go get certified for the NetPlus certification, it's not a requirement of the course, but you have to pay for that certification. Comp CompTIA, CompTIA, Academy pricing. I have these sites in Blackboard, but they have an academic price that they give to us because we are a CompTIA Academy, and it's way cheaper than industry. While you're a student and while you have a EDU email address, you'll want to take advantage of that. So CompTIA certification voucher right now is or for the Network Plus is $141. If you were working in the field without being a student, it's $277. So you're getting a good deal to go and take that at a lower price. Um, that's not a requirement for the course though. Uh, if you are Network Plus certified right now, stop and email me because you can get credit for this class. And if you take this, if you take your certification toward the end of the semester without doing your work and you pass it, you can get an A in the course. That's what we're trying to teach you and get you ready for. It's a net plus certification. It's the N10006 exam. So something you want to check out if you're transferring to university, um, many I know I know Ferris requires you to have three certifications in order to graduate anyway. This is a great time to get one. So we're gonna prepare for that, whether you take it or not. But it um, we'll talk about that more as the semester goes on, and we'll use Transcender to help prepare us for that. So. That's the short list of what's required. Down here is just more details. The ISBN, what is Transcender. Here, here's me and Jill who wrote the book. I really like her, she's a nice lady, nice person. Um, where you can go to buy the exam, buy the voucher, where do you go to take the test. Um, one other thing, there's actually two other things that I want to tell you about free software. One is on the hub. Now we don't need we don't need to get anything out of on the hub for this course, but in the first week or so of the class, you will get an email from our our administrative assistant, our department um, secretary, and they'll tell you how to 
log into on the hub, which used to be called DreamSpark. And in there is a whole bunch of free software that you can get, like server products. You can get a VM player, a VM workstation, which we'll use in a lot of our courses. You can get free Microsoft software, free Adobe software. So when you get that email, and it's the on the hub registration, you need to get a new one every semester. If you had one last year, you get a new one this year. Make sure that you check that out. Because while you're a student in our department, you have a lot of free, free things. Um, the other piece of software I want to tell you about that you can get for free. So there's on the hub. But the other one is down here in resources. And in here, I have a whole bunch of things. But it's the office and education website. Um, we have a bunch of free links. There's a link here. But while you're a student, you don't buy your office products from on the hub because it costs money. Uh, by office, I mean Word, Excel, PowerPoint. If you don't have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you can get it for free. You just need to follow this website, and it will tell you, it, it will let you download Office 365 and you can install Word, Excel, PowerPoint on your computer, up to five computers for free. It's the Office and Education program. I use it on my, on my computer as well, um, all the newest products. So if you're, if you're using, um, you know, some, uh, like OpenOffice, which is good software as well, but if you don't have um, Office products and you're taking an Excel class or a Word class, it's important to have that. Um, even if you don't aren't taking those courses, you can still get that software for free. So do it while you're a student; it's a good deal. Okay, we were in the syllabus and grading. No, we weren't. We were in the required materials um, folder. Um, I think that's everything. Um, X um, X voucher transcender information. Just more information on how to log in and how to get your software activated. One, and then videos that I've made on how to use it. Once you um, buy your code, don't wait to the last minute before that due date of the 28th, but once you get your code, check out this link here so that you can see, um, you know, it'll answer any questions you have on how to get access to it, and if you have, if you didn't get an email, if you need support, um, problems with Xvouch or Transcender. There's a ton of information there. We don't manage the product, so we can't help you. But there's information on who can help you. We didn't have a lot of problems, though, last year. It works pretty good. Blackboard calendar, email link. I think that's about it. Here's a link to the CompTIA network website, um, Network Plus website. Um, and for now, that's the introduction to the course. So um, I appreciate you guys understanding, especially my face-to-face -face class, that I'm missing the first day. But I'll be there um, next week. And then for you, those of you in my online class, you know, send me an email if you need to. Um, and I'll be on there sending you announcements as well. So. Thank you. Welcome to CIS 233, and I look forward to uh, working with you all this semester. It's going to be a good one. Bye.